taking a step back from this specific story, but I'm, I didn't expect to be the first one <laughs> to be selected. But I'm more curious about your writing process in general. And you have been so successful in telling the stories of real people in a compelling way to the level that they have been adopted for uh, movies. What do you think is in your book and in your style of storytelling that makes, makes your story so compelling? Okay. And there's a gentleman behind you there. Yeah. You were mentioning that it looks like possibly all of the creditors will get their money back. They may. What, they might. They might. Yeah. Um, what about the, the charities, the organizations, the long-termist and effective altruist organizations to whom he, they had promised billions of dollars? There were projects that were already gearing up to having been funded. Yeah. I'm just wondering if, you know, what might happen to those? Because some of them are completely done for. Yeah. Mm. So, effective altruists, organisations that might have got money that will no longer, and what is it, do you think, that makes your writing, your books, so compelling? You, what order do you want me to take them? Any order you like. It's hard to remember both at once, but all right. Uh, so, sure you're okay. Um, so, let's the second one, because that's a, the, 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 the effect, I'll start with that. The effective altruist, um, uh, the, the, the donations. So there's an interesting intellectual exercise that needs to be done inside the bankruptcy that has not been done, and that John Ray, the person running it, said would be, would be done, but it hasn't been done, um, told me it would be done. And it, it, in order to, so there are two problems with the people who've been given money. The people who've actually been given money face the prospect of having it clawed back by the bankruptcy. That's one kind of problem. And then there are people who thought they were gonna get money and the money doesn't show. I don't think it's I don't think that second pot is actually billions, but there are some, I've heard from them. And that's just sad and they're not gonna get any money. They, they, it was, if it, it was promised or it was hoped for and it's not gonna be there. But the, the curiouser pile is, oh, you already got, he gave away, I don't know, three or four hundred million dollars and did it in a, much of it in a very odd way. Um, they, they looked at the philanthropic model and said it's kind of busted. Like the huge, in most philanthropies, huge amounts of money just go to sustaining the philanthropy, to bureaucracy costs, and, and to vetting proposals mm -hmm. and it, on subjects that you don't know that much about. So what they did is they had their buckets they were interested in. They were interested in mostly existential risks to humanity, but it was p pandemic prevention, it was uh, artificial intelligence, what, whatever the buckets were. They went out to individuals who they knew, understood, who were specialists and said, essentially, you might get an, out of the blue this email from FTX. Here's a million dollars. Give it away in the best way possible. Just do it. And, and you can do it however you want, and we're not going to monitor it. And just tell us what you did so we can just track to see how effective this was. So there were several hundred people who got that email and gave that money away. Wow. But, but it means that the gifts were in pretty small amounts, and I don't think worth the while of the bankruptcy to try to go get. So I don't think they're going to claw it back, but the intellectual exercise they have to engage in to claw it back is to prove that when the money was given away, FTX was actually bankrupt. And the, the question is, when was FTX bankrupt? It, it, it certainly wasn't bankrupt in February of last year. It was, it, there, was, there was triple or double the number of customer deposits there. there was, so there's some moment, either when crypto collapses, or maybe it's not even until November of last year, when you could actually prove that it was bankrupt. And if they can't prove it was bankrupt, they can't claw it back. So I, I don't, the only people who have given back money are people who are embarrassed by it, the money, the politicians, kind of. They've been a the bit of that, but they don't have to give the money back. And I would love to see someone fight it, because I think you're gonna probably get to the, the, the argument's going to be, it's going to be somewhere, it's going to be pretty late in the day in FTX's life before it's actually bankrupt. Uh, writing process. Like why, do you want me to ask, explain why they get made into movies or just why like my books sell? Uh, the, the, it, both kind of, so the process is, I have asked myself this because I'm a curious creature as a writer. I don't, m most writers had a sense of themselves as writers pretty young. And I had no sense of myself as a writer until I got out of college. And nobody ever said, I swear to you, no one ever saw promise in me. No, one, no English teacher said, oh, you really have talent, you really should. I had no Walter Mitty-ish like fantasy, nothing. So never wrote for a school newspaper. So it's strange that my life has taken 
the course it's taken. What happened in my case was I became, when I was a senior in college, wholly absorbed with a book-length thesis I had to write. And it turned out very, very well intellectually, not very well literarily. So poorly literarily that when I asked my professor, what do you think of the writing? He said, put it this way, never try to make a living at it. <laughs> but I, I, I did. I did try to make a living at it. And, and I did it because it was the one thing I'd ever done that could be construed as work that during which I lost track of time. And it was here in London. I was living up in Hampstead, and our St. John's Wood first, but then Hampstead. And then I would, I would, I don't know why I had to need to make that distinction. But the, but, but, but. <laughs> they are quite different. <laughs> they, yeah, I know they're different. But, but I can remember hours would pass. I'd write some article that would be rejected by some place, and hours would pass, and I wouldn't know it had passed. I also noticed that when I wrote letters to people in a more, in a real self-conscious way, like here's what's going on in London now, they would get passed around. Like, you know, I would come home, go home to New Orleans and people would come up and say, I read that letter you wrote your mother, it's all over the place, it's funny. And I thought, well, people want, people want to read me. They, 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 will, they will read me. Um, so I had, I, and I think, it, I think to the extent there was any ability, it was some kind of voice on the page that I can't explain and that would never have been identified by um, academia at, at any school at any point because they don't ask for voice. They ask for you know, a, a thesis statement and a blah, 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 and you're never yourself in school. But when I was myself on the page, it somehow worked and I don't want to know why. It just like works and I don't want to stop. Um, but for the subjects, like why the things work, I, this, this is, this is gonna sound like bullshit, but I think it's true. I'm basically an incredibly lazy person. Like left, I'm in, you know, an object at rest will remain, remain at rest. I will remain at rest longer than any other object. That I just don't, I don't have an impulse to work. So for something to get my attention to the point where I'll get off my ass and actually do something about it, it's gotta be really exciting. I get really, as you can tell, I get really worked up about the subjects. So I'm, it's passing through a filter to get to the point where I'm gonna write about it. I'm not gonna just write a book to write a book. Right now, I may never write another book again. Like, I don't care if I, I would like to, but I, I don't care that much. I'm prepared that that's, I've never found a subject that will excite me again, and I won't do it ever again. The fact that, like, I, it has to rouse me, I think gets me to a place with the reader where it rouses the reader too. I also think that as for not, as it's, it's a, this genre I work in is a particularly American genre. It's heavily, heavily reported. Like people think I just have an opinion about Sam Bankman Freed. I don't have an opinion, or, or my opinion is earned anyway. It's a year and a half of hundreds of hours of immersion, not just with him, but everything around him. And I don't, I wouldn't, if you'd asked me after six months, write a book, I couldn't have done it. I, 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 this is a funny thing. The day before FTX collapsed, I was with a very famous film director who has become a kind of friend, who I use as a sounding board for story because I admire his story, his story instincts. And I said to him, I got this problem. I've spent a year and two months marinating in this world. And I described Sam the character. I described a bunch of scenes. I said, I've got all this stuff but I don't have a story and I can't figure out why I don't have a story. And he said, you don't have a story because you don't have a third act. There's no ending to this. And I said, that's exactly, that's exactly right. And it's also right that I don't know how to start it unless I know how it ends. Like I've had books where I know the last sentence. I knew the last, like the last words of this book before I wrote the first words of the book. Sometimes it changes, but sometimes I actually am navigating to a point I know. And I know where to navigate to. So I was prepared at that moment not to write the book. And uh, it, it wasn't until I was I absolutely like had it in the bag and was sure that I even bothered to sit down and write the book. And I think that helps. I think that like the walkaway ability, like don't do it unless it actually feels right as a story, really helps with the, with the readers and probably with the movies too, because it gives them some structure.